Hello and welcome back everyone. In this video we're going to go over a subtopic of boundary value problems. We're going to discuss boundary conditions. For some of you guys who are visual learners, this is going to be a very easy subject and for some of you don't even need this video, but for some people who have trouble visualizing these problems, um, the majority of the transport phenomena problems, the majority of the problems uh, found in heat, heat transfer, mass transfer, momentum transfer, they're very visual. So it's very critical to visualize. Visualizing is very important. So visualizing is very, very, very important in solving these problems. And most professors would be, <coughs> sorry, most experienced individuals would be, would just be able to solve them by intuition. And before we develop intuition, we need to have a toolkit. We need to follow some procedures, some steps that can give us good solutions. And in this video, my first example is um, the one that I have right here. It's just a uh, steady state. For those of you that are curious, it's just a steady state uh, conduction. It's just a steady state conduction problem. A steady state heat conduction problem with no sources or sinks. There's no net generation, of course. No sources or sinks and constant uh, conductivity so that so this is the problem that i am going to show you as an example and here on the right i have my governing equation so by governing equation as you guys will see in the later parts of your course you start off with a general equation and you simplify it down to your governing equation so this is the governing equation that models this problem okay now once I integrate, once I integrate, I'll, I'll have to perform integration two times since it's a second order differential equation. I get two constants. I get two constants of integration. Okay, my C1 and C2. Now I need to solve these, right? And in order to solve these, I will be using my boundary conditions. Now let's stop here for a second. And now I'm going to shift my attention. Let me just clear some of this mess for you guys. I apologize in advance. So after I have cleared some of this mess, I hope you guys can see here that at x equals 0, at x equals zero, my inlet temperature, let's call that t, my, sorry, the temperature at x equals zero, not inlet, there is no flow, my bad, sorry. So I'm gonna, we're gonna call that t zero. And on the other side, at x equals L, my temperature is gonna be t sub L. All right, we're not talking about any numbers yet. We're just doing everything symbolically so that you guys get a, you guys are familiar with the procedure, okay? So if we use our boundary condition, these two are our bound, these basically uh, are, the, are the conditions at our boundary. At x equals zero, that's my boundary. The temperature has been given. At x equals L, my temperature has been given as TL. That's a boundary condition, okay? So by using my boundary conditions, I get, let's say I want to use my, the boundary condition at x equals zero, corresponding t equals t zero. If I use that boundary condition, let's call that my boundary condition one. And I get, I get, let's see, t zero equals c two. I hope you guys see that simple algebra simple algebra now my next boundary condition use bc2 okay and once again my bc2 is at x equals l my temperature is equal to t sub l all right turns out at where we can write this as t sub l times um, c1 times l plus t naught. 
and after simplification c1 turns out to be tl my tl sorry tl minus t sub zero over l all right so our final solution comes out to be our final solution comes out to be t as a function of x is equal to t at x equals l minus t sub zero divided by l multiplied by x of course plus t zero that ladies and gentlemen is my particular solution that ladies and gentlemen is the solution to my boundary value problem now this is we're going to go over some more examples and we're going to talk about the different kinds of boundary conditions and we're, we're going to talk about boundary conditions in different uh, coordinate systems so in this video we covered a, a simple cartesian a simple cartesian coordinates problem cartesian let me just spell it out so this problem was done in cartesian coordinates and in the next videos we're going to go over um, hopefully cylindrical and spherical all right guys thank you very much for watching all right